Well, nice to see you here. Welcome to House of Prayer Sunday. We're super excited that you're here with us. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, high five whoever is in your living room. If you're by yourself, high five yourself. And we're so glad to hear or to see that you're here with us today. Leave a comment letting us know you're here because you know what? Last week you guys did that. It was awesome. We got to see who was here and say hello. And today we're talking about prayer. It's a house of prayer Sunday. And I am super excited for all the things that we're going to be doing today. I love that we're not just a church that has prayer, but we are a church of prayer. And we have been seeing tons of answers to prayer week by week and hearing awesome things that God is doing in your lives. So we're super excited for today. I just want to make a few announcements, and one of them is that we are having a personal prayer and reflection time again this week, and it's going to be Tuesday, March 16th, from 7 to 9, a drop-in from 7 to 9. It's going to look a lot like it did from our drop-in last week, and uh, love to see you there. Also, March 30th at 7 p.m., we're going to pull everybody together that's involved in our live streaming events on a Sunday. So that's worship leaders, that's band, that's backup singers, that's media, camera, and sound. And we're going to have a quick 45-minute meetup, March 30th at 7 p.m. And you have to register online on our website in order to get the Zoom link. So if you're interested in that, Register for the Zoom link, and that's March 30th. Also, Set Free is coming up. If you've ever been a part of that, you're going to know that this is an awesome time, and it's an opportunity to invite God to bring healing into your life and where you can experience his love, his grace, and his forgiveness. And there's no cost for this online retreat There is a possibility we could meet in person, but we will let you know. It's important that you register soon. So register online at evangelfsj.com or through your app and let us know that you're interested. Also coming up is session four. And if if you've ever been a part of that, you'll know what we talk about there is kind of like a bit of a teaser to all this uh, mentoring talk that that you'll hear almost every Sunday. We at Evangel mentor about 90 people. And maybe you're, you're asking yourself, what is this about? Well, you can check it out when we do a session for four sessions, one hour long, and that's coming up in June. We'll get you more details. All right, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to turn it over to Tony. But let's just have expectant hearts this morning. Let's ask and let's expect and let's come with faith. So God, we just, we just thank you for today, God, and we thank you that we can come and, and have this house of prayer focus on a Sunday, God. I just know that there's times, God, we don't offer our prayers, and that's one of the reasons why we don't get answers to prayers. But God, we are coming today. We're offering prayers to you, God. We're going to be praying for all different things today, God, and we are praying with expectant hearts, God, faith to believe. You said even if we have a, a, a faith the size of a mustard seed, that's not huge, God, and I know that each one of us can bring that this morning, God, as we focus on the things that you want us to pray for this morning. In your name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. I'm going to turn it over to my favorite person. <laughs> yeah, okay. So House of Prayer Sunday, we always start with a bit of a teaching burst, and then we're going to get into some practical stuff. I love House of Prayer Sunday because it's not just a, it's not just a time for you to, to sit and, and listen. And, and, and be sort of a passive engagement. It's a, it's a chance to be actively engaged. So we're going to, in a little bit, the Dean is going to walk us through a little bit of a listening, meditation exercise. Jimmy's going to take us through some intercession. And it's going to be really good. We're going to have a time of worship. We're excited about it. Are you guys excited about it out there? Yes, okay. So um, fit for life, fit for life. And I did want to say that the prayer time on Tuesday is 7 p.m., not a.m. Just wanted to make sure. I noticed maybe we might have missed that. So 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Okay. 
We're talking about being fit for life, and I want to kind of flow into, into that. Talking, we've been talking a lot about the health of our body and how that's important to God. First Corinthians six nineteen, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and so your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It actually matters. But we're kind of zooming in on the on the health of the soul. And I don't know about you, but last week kind of caught me off guard as the one as the one preaching this stuff. But the idea that your soul, the health of your soul, and we're talking about your mind, will and emotions, the thinking part of you, that it is so incredibly impacted by what you do with your body, whether that's movement, whether that's the kinds of things you put into your body. So that's really all we got to. I had about eight points, but all we got, the first, the, if you want to renew your soul, then you have to deal with um, things that you're doing with your body, and that makes a huge difference to the health of your mind. And so we're going to pick up on that in, 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 by going into a second piece, and I think it's going to tie in well with where we're going today. And that's this. If you're going to have a healthy soul, at some point, you're going to have to learn the art of meditation. You didn't expect me to say that. Meditation is actually, in a lot of church circles, considered a negative thing. You might be thinking, isn't meditation a new age practice? And I want to tell you right now, it's, it absolutely is, it is foundational through Scripture. And you see it everywhere, the idea of meditation. If you think uh, the, 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 Christianese, the Christianese term for meditation is actually daily devotions, which ironically is a term you don't find in Scripture. Daily devos is not a scriptural term. Meditation is, and I'm going to show you that. And if you're going to have a healthy soul, then meditation has got to be a part of your life, okay? And you're going to see this in Scripture. But I like this one, Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. We'll throw this, um, may, well, here, here it is. Genesis 24, verse 63. And... Um, Isaiah, Isaac, the patriarch, Isaac, he's a, sing, he's a young single man, and his father Abraham is concerned that he finds a wife. And the story picks up that, that Abraham's servant actually goes to a, another region, another land, and there he finds a young lady named Rebekah, and Rebekah ends up being Isaac's perfect match. And so the servant of Abraham brings Rebekah back. And I love, we pick up the story right from there in, in Genesis 24, and it says, And Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening. Isn't that interesting? Isaac's going out, and he's spending some time meditating, in the evening. And as he's doing this, he's out there in the field and he's meditating. He's having some quiet time. This is what meditation looks like. It, it's, it's a little bit of isolation. It's a little bit of quiet time. It's time to just reflect and just think. And I'm going to give you some ideas of where to go on that. But here's Isaac. This is such a regular part of Jewish tradition, the idea of meditation. Isaac's meditating. He's outdoors. That's a great place to meditate. And as he's there, it says, he lifted up his eyes and saw... And behold, there were, there were camels coming. And as Isaac's there in a meditative state, he sees, he, he had, his eyes are open to see, and he sees these camels coming from afar. And it turns out that these camels come bearing precious cargo, and one of the young women on, those, on one of the camels is his future wife, Rebecca. And I can't help but think that as we learn how to drop into meditation and how to think this way, maybe there are things that God is bringing into our lives. There's things that God wants to bring into our world that unless we have the eyes to see, uh, we may miss out on that. I think that's a, that's a good place to go. Okay, so we live in a culture of headlines. We're all about headlines. We're not about fine print. It's, um, it's swipe instead of click nowadays. It's scan instead of read. And we seldom really dig in. We seldom get into the fine print. And John Eldridge says this in a book called Get Your Life Back. He says, dear reader, you can't find more of God when all you're able to give him is a flit and flicker of your attention. I think that is very, very true. Unless we're able to actually go a little bit deeper in our relationship with God and, and get beyond the, the headlines, we may miss the God who is often in the details and in the fine print. This didn't originate as a new age practice. Meditation did not. It's actually all the way through scriptures. And I'm going to encourage you to consider, as you think about the health of your soul, this is really, really important, that you probably need about 15 minutes at least a day where you find a quiet space, maybe some quiet music. Maybe it's out in your truck somewhere, sitting on an open field, usually with a way of recording your thoughts. 
I'll say right, right now that meditation is a difficult thing, and a lot of times we actually find it's, it's, uh, there's something slippery about meditation. It's hard to get a grip on. You could call it the squirrel syndrome, where we are so easily distracted that any time we get into this quiet mode of meditation and reflective thought, that it's so, we're, we're like the dog that sees a squirrel, and we're just jumping from this to that and the other thing. And so one of the reasons why journaling or writing down is an important part of meditation is because it gives you a really practical way to get a solid grip on those slippery thoughts. Does that make sense? And the act of writing down, whether you're writing something in your journal or you're, you got your device out and you're typing down some notes, the act of typing kind of serves as a handrail for your thoughts. And um, there's more science that I could get in on that, but I just think that these are all key parts of what it means to meditate. Okay, so as we consider the practice of meditation, maybe you're already doing this. If you're in mentoring, you're part of an, a group of 90 people that are committed to this day in and day out. We're spending time with God day in and day out. That is meditation, lock, stock, and barrel. If you call it daily devos, that's fine, but it's meditation. Here's some things that I think we want to be meditating on, and we're going to go here as we get into the listening part of our time of prayer together. And I'm going to be pretty fast here, so you might want to take notes. First, meditate. This is a soul exercise. Meditate on who God is and what God is has done. Did you catch that? We begin, to, we begin to take ourselves deeply into thought about who God is and what he's done. And this is all through scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Psalm 143 verse 5 says, I meditate on all that you have done and I ponder, that's a good word, ponder the work of your hands. This is something scripture invites us into is meditating on who God is and all that he's done. Other verses that we know, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. That, that's a meditation. Psalm 77, 12, I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Man, if I'm going to tell you to go into meditation for the sake of the health of your mind, in a season in life right now on our planet, that there's a lot of frazzle frazzle be dazzle in our minds and we have a hard time focusing on anything. Start here by focusing on who God is and what he's done. Psalm 119 verse 27, make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous works. So first, meditate on who God is and what he's done. Second, meditate, this is good, come on, meditate on the promises of God. And we've been talking a little bit about Caleb. And one of the things that Caleb, we see that Caleb has done in Joshua 14 is that he is fixated on the promise of God. You've got to rehearse the right things in your mind. You've got to rehearse the right things in your mind. And God knows we rehearse the wrong things. We rehearse, I can't do that. The impossibilities. We rehearse the lies that we believe around our identity. We've got to rehearse the right things. And a good place to go is the promises of God. What are the promises of God that are spoken to you specifically? You may have a promise that was spoken over you when you were very young. In fact, Paul speaks about this in 1 Timothy verse 4, chapter 13. He tells Timothy, he says, I want you to immerse yourself in this. What is it that he's going to immerse himself in? The words that were spoken over him when the elders laid hands on him and prophesied. And Paul is saying, Timothy... Remember the gift that was given to you? Remember that moment when you, were, when, you were, when you were prophesied over and the word of the Lord was given to you? I want you to rehearse that. Immerse yourself in that. Psalm 119, verse 48. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night. <laughs> have you ever found yourself awake in the middle of the night? I know I have. And often at that moment, there's not good things floating through my mind. I'm worried about some kind of financial thing or some kind of church-related issue that I'm trying to walk through. And here's what the psalmist says in Psalm 119. He says, I lay awake in the watches of the night, meditating on your promise. I, I can tell you, if you just do these first two things, begin to meditate on who God is and what he's done, and you begin to meditate on the promise of God, you're going to find your soul is going to come flipping alive. Okay, third, meditate upon the statues, the statutes, not statues, <laughs> decrees and judgments of God. And you might be thinking, oh, this is, we just took a turn for the worse here. You're telling me to, 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 me to meditate on the laws and the rules and all of these, the judgments of God, but you miss something here. If you have a religious sense of judgment, meaning a bad thing, this is, this, is, this is what statute means when you look it up in the, in, in the dictionary and you find a thesaurus. A statute. This is what Psalm 119 says. 
Verse 97 to 99, I meditate upon your statutes. I take some time in the day to meditate around what God says. And here's what statute is. A decree, a ruling, a a promulgation. I don't even know what that is. A motion, a pronouncement, a ratification, a proclamation, a covenant, an ordinance. So statutes are not just rules. Statutes are things that God says are true. And I think there's two things that you should think about when you think of statutes. What, is, what does God's word say about who he is? And what does God's word say about who you are? And those two things are things you should meditate on. We've already kind of talked about who God is, who he is and what he's done. But this, I want to, I want to zone more in on who you are. It's interesting to me that when Caleb, he has a renewed mind, how does it flesh itself out for Caleb? Well, you can find it in Numbers chapter 13, where he says, he says about the promised land and about the, the venture in front of them. He says, we can surely do it. And he reflects what Paul says in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I think when you reflect on the statute of God, you have to come into agreement with what God says about you and me. Come on, this preaches. Do I hear an amen? What does God's word say about you? There are so many things that, God, that are said about you and me as followers of Jesus. Matthew 5.13, you are the salt of the earth. Matthew 5.14, the next verse, you are the light of the world. Matthew 6.26, you are valuable to God. John chapter 15, verse 15, you are a branch tied in to the true vine. Matthew 15, verse 15 also says, you are a friend of God. Matthew 15, or John 15, verse 16, you're chosen and appointed by Christ to go and bear fruit. And on and on and on. Romans 8, 2, that you are free in Christ. Romans 8, 1, that there's no condemnation over your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Meditation has intrinsically built into it this idea that you're going to meditate on what God says about you. Man, would that be a good thing? Would that be a good thing? Because you know what? You do have an enemy, and he's known as the accuser of the brethren. He has a lot of things to say about you. And unfortunately, that's often the report we listen to. And so a really good practice around meditation. You're out there, uh, you know, I had a friend that just said recently he just drove up on the hill, open field with his truck, and just sat there to think. If you took that moment to begin to think about what God's word says about you and your life, I think you would find that something would begin to trigger and change. Remember, 3 John 1, 2. I believe that's the verse. May you prosper as your soul prospers. And as your soul prospers, that affects everything else. And as you begin to meditate on what God's word says about him, or what God's word says about you. Okay, there's a lot more I could say about that, but let's move on. Fourth, meditate on, what, meditate on what's going on inside your head. You have a responsibility in, in terms of the health of your soul to once in a while take a step back and analyze what's happening up here. And the scriptures invite us into this. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And the psalmist is saying, I'm, looking, I'm taking a look at what's going on in my soul, what's going on in my thought life, and I'm asking the question, is it acceptable? Is it good? Is it God-pleasing? Is it praiseworthy? And we have a responsibility to analyze the things that are going on in our, in our minds to do a little bit of a search. Psalm 49 verse 3 says, My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. Lamentations 3 verse 40, Let us examine and test our ways and turn back to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith. Faith is a thing of the soul realm. And you and I are to examine ourselves and go, Am I in faith right now? Or am I in unbelief? You have a responsibility to actually meditate and think deeply about what's going on in your, in your mind. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. Each one of us must examine ourselves before we eat the bread and drink the cup. There's an, an invitation to self-examination. We want God to examine us and search us deeply, but we have a responsibility to go there as well. There are two things that you should, you should be quick to analyze skeptically when they're going on inside your mind. And the first is this, when you are upset. When you find yourself during the day or whenever upset for some reason, your soul is out of sorts. Upset can be some minor or major hurt that happens in your day through a situation. It could be an unkind word. It could be being slighted. It could be you feel a sense of envy or a sense of abandonment. 
And whenever you find yourself in a place of being upset, it's really good to take a look at that and find out why and let the Holy Spirit speak into that. The second thing that I think is good to self-analyze on is when you find yourself anxious. I heard anxiety defined this way. Anxiety is a garbled signal about what a part of us perceives as a danger. <laughs> like that. It's a garbled signal about what part of us believes is a danger without clearly revealing the roots of that concern. I think that is really good. And you find yourself anxious for whatever reason. You have a responsibility, I'm telling you this, for the sake of the health of your soul to at that point spend some time meditating. And at the center of your meditation should be Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, what's going on here? Jesus, what's happening? That I'm anxious about this. I'm anxious about my finances right now. I'm anxious about my marriage. I'm anxious about my work. I'm anxious about my church. Whatever the case may be, this is a really powerful place to, to, to spend some time meditating. Fifth, meditate on goodness. And this is, um, this is going to lead you into gratitude, which is a beautiful thing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, listen to this. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if the, excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The invitation to meditation, again, comes through loud and clear there. And the last and not least is meditate on Scripture. And one of the best things you and I can do is actually memorize Scripture, get it inside of us. I actually think in some ways meditation on Scripture has to be, has, it will, will only follow up memorizing Scripture. And you get it inside of you, then you can just let yourself be saturated with the Word. And this actually is one of the ways that God brings healing to your soul. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 says, hmm, that's me making sure I'm on time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like accountability, right? Like it's like, okay, everybody knows we're on time. Now how do you turn it off? Okay, there you go. Ephesians 5, verse 26. Six, washing with water through the word. And, and you're, you're, the word of God literally brings healing to your soul. And so memorizing scripture and meditating upon scripture is a really, really good thing. Okay, we don't do a lot of teaching on House of Prayer Sunday. I walk through that in about 15 minutes because we actually want to spend time in prayer. So we are going to go into a two-minute pause now. And I want you just to kind of, you can be seated if you want, but I want you just to quiet yourself. If you know Star, that's exactly what we're walking into. We're just going to quiet ourselves, take a few deep breaths, and invite the Holy Spirit to move into our our, our hour of prayer together, and then the worship team is going to come up and lead us in some worship. So with that, let's go to the two-minute pause, get in a place where you can just chill out here for a couple minutes, and let's just quiet ourselves before the Lord. Let's be still for one minute. Be still and know that I am God. Jesus, I give everything and everyone to you. I give everything and everyone to you, God. I give myself to you, Jesus, for union with you. I am created for union with you, God. I need more of you, God. Fill me with more of you. That's good. 
That's enough for now.
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that uh, for for this opportunity to be together in your presence, to worship your name, to lift your name high above all names. We build our lives upon a solid foundation, which is you, Jesus, your sacrifice, your love. Thank you that we can trust you with all our lives. This is a good opportunity to to stop, take a deep breath, and appreciate, appreciate what Jesus has done for us. His blood, his sacrifice, purchased our freedom, purchased eternity that is safe, eternity that is, um, that is uh, for us, prepared, was pr- prepared for us from the foundations of the world. And we want to spend this time in, 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 in meditating on what Jesus has done. And I want us to just go into this, this um, I would say, listening mode for a moment. And we'll spend about 10, 15 minutes just listening to Jesus. And as Pastor Tony was, was talking about the importance of meditation, the importance of chewing on the Word of God, I want us to go there. And we'll spend some time there. Just uh, if you have your journal, um, I have a big, thick journal here. Uh, grab your journal. If you don't have a physical um, paper to write things down, grab your device, but be ready to receive the words that Jesus is going to speak to you. And um, we're going to put up some slides in a moment. Um, and there's three things that I want us to meditate on today. And the first one is who God is. The second one is we'll meditate on the promises of God. And the third one is we're going to meditate on who you are. And we'll listen. We'll listen to what Jesus has to say to us. So let's, let's, let's just spend two minutes, two minutes meditating on, on who God is. So we'll put a slide, and there's going to be a scripture there. And I, I just encourage you to read through that scripture as, as we're meditating and, and listen. Listen for, the, for anything that God will drop in your heart. And so it can be a word that catches your attention. It can be a phrase that seizes you. Some people say grabs you, grabs your heart. So listen for those moments because they're important and write them down. Journal them. All right. So... Here's the slide, and let's spend a few minutes just meditating on it.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that, um, that we can hear your voice and that you are speaking. Thank you for who you are, God. Thank you for what you've done. And especially as we're meditating on this scripture, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that we can be saved and we can have life. Thank you, Jesus. The next thing that I want us to meditate on is, is, um, is the promise that God has given you, the promises of God. And again, we're going to put up a slide, and uh, there's going to be a scripture on that slide. And as you read, ask Jesus, what is the promise that you have for me? Um, and if, if there, were, there was a promise in the past that God has given you, um, remind yourself of that promise and write, write it down physically. Write it down and read it again. Remind yourself that there's things that God is, has promised you and that he's faithful because of who he is. He's faithful to, to fulfill them. So let's, let's, let's meditate on the promises of God for a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah, the promises of God are our life. They, they give us hope. They, have, they give us endurance to persevere through difficult circumstances. So if you have something that God has spoken to you a long time ago, re keep reminding yourself, keep reminding and meditating on the promise of God. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Um, and the last thing, but not least, I want us to spend some time meditating, this time meditating on who you are. We've done it. We've done, um, we've done some meditation on, on who God is and what he has done. We've looked at the, at the promises that he's making. Um, and now it's, it's important to hear what God is speaking to you personally about who you are. So let's, let's uh, we're gonna, again, we're going to put up a slide, and in that, on that slide there's going to be a scripture, and we're going to meditate. We're going to chew on the words of God and allow those words to change us from the inside out. So uh, let's, let's, let's meditate on who you are as, as we read this scripture.
Yeah, it's so important to meditate and reflect on who you are.、Um, from the perspective of God, that's why we listen to the Word of God. We listen to the Bible and the things that the Bible、uh, speaks to us, so that we we know who we are in Jesus. Because the world says completely different things about our identity, to whom we belong, our values. And、so it's important to remind ourselves, meditate on the things that God speaks about us. And now,、uh, this is this is it. This this it's been a, a good time in the presence of God and just just meditating on Scripture. And now we're gonna we're gonna go into intercession verse, and、uh, it's gonna be more dynamic.、Uh, it's gonna be we're gonna be pressing in and and just praying about some things that God、um, we want God to do in our lives. In this city, in the country, and so I, I encourage you to again press in. Maybe if, if you if you feel like you need to stand up and and move、um, in in your in your house in your living room, do it、uh, because motion produces emotion, and so、uh, allow your body to just get、um, get on it. And and,、uh, and so Jimmy is going to lead us through these prayer requests. We have we have.、Um, Uh, on the walls of、uh, Evangel's building, we have、um, massive、uh, posters with where people wrote their prayers, and we encourage you、um, again. Also,、uh, come here on、uh, Tuesday from seven to nine. There's going to be drop-in prayer、uh, for personal prayer and contemplation, and come in and drop、um, drop a note、uh, on the wall your prayer requests that you're praying and believing God. And so now we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, pray for for the things that are on the wall, and we encourage you to join us. Okay, Jimmy. All right, we're gonna、uh, push into some prayer requests, some prayer bursts. We're just gonna start here, as we often do,、uh, with gratitude. And I just want to say before we get going, there is、uh, I think five or six different、um, prayer request boards. These paper boards here. That we have, and they're from the、uh, personal prayer and contemplation times, where we've put these up. And then all of these, if you can see here on the camera, are little things that people have actually written. Somebody drew a picture. Not sure what that is. Maybe Tony <laughs> drew that, or I drew that. But these are things that we're actually grateful for. And so we're gonna start here, as we always do. And I just want to say, if you don't, if you aren't feeling this. Welcome to the club. Oftentimes, we aren't feeling like going there. We aren't feeling grateful. We aren't feeling thankful. But you actually lead yourself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw up a slide, and I just ask that you would stand up and really get into this. Lead yourself into gratefulness, if that's a word. <laughs> Gratitude, and then we're going to hit some of these prayer requests. All right. Right, man. It's good to start with gratitude. This is on our wall. Is 
as well. It's the prayer for the, prayer for the city of Fort St. John. Our man, we feel so much passion for our Jerusalem, and Fort St. John is our Jerusalem. And you can see some prayer requests up here, um, like this, praying for our city leaders, um, praying against the spirit of alcohol and drugs and the beautiful lives of those in the city. We're praying um, for, for truth and grace, awakening of truth and grace, for rich overflowing, God's rich overflowing love, mercy, mercy and grace, restoration, miracles of healing, um, salvation, provision, shift. It's good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to lead in prayer, but I want you to pray along. In other words, when we, when we pray like this, it's, we call it agreement prayer. So as I'm praying, you can pray your own words or you can just go, yeah, yeah, boom, things like that. And we're going to do that right now. So God, we just thank you for the city of Fort St. John. And we just want to speak blessing and life over our city, God. Thank you for putting us in Fort St. John. We just see your hand at work bringing us here. And we love this place. We love the country. We love the outdoors. We love the city. We love the people. We love our leadership, God. We pray for our leadership right now, God. We pray for Lori Ackerman, our mayor, and the council that you've surrounded her with. We just pray right now, God, a spirit of wisdom on them, especially as we come through this whole COVID season and anticipate the opening of regulations a bit and community coming back into full force. We pray for an incredible amount of wisdom. I also want to pray, God, for vision. God, would you give us a vision as a church and as a city? Give us a vision for our city. We, we, I know that's part of this, the energetic city. We have a vision to be a place full of life, a place full of energy, a place that's, that's full of life after and young families and community. We pray that you would continue to sharpen vision. God, if any of us are in the place right now where we just feel like we don't have vision for our city, and maybe we, we use the excuse of, oh, what does it matter if I have a vision? We just, we, we rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. And we pray that from the youngest to the oldest, from those that have been here for six months to those that have been here all of their lives, God, that you would give us a vision, that would, a, 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 a provocative, great vision that would restrain us that would bring us into a place of wanting to do everything we could to make this city prosper and make this city an incredible place. So we pray prosperity, God, over our city. We pray awakening, God. We pray for miracles. We pray for the breaking of addiction. We pray for clean streets. We pray that this place would be a beautiful place all the way around, God. We pray for provision, for jobs. We pray for an economy that's bursting at the seams. And mostly we pray for a city that finds its way to your lap that finds its way to your feet. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, if you agree with that, say amen. amen. Boom. Amen. Yeah, we're just gonna go over here. You can follow us to number three personal prayer requests. And so we're just gonna, um, I just wanna read a couple of these. Again, these are from the personal prayer and contemplation time. Personal prayer requests. These are prayer requests that you guys have put up here. Healing for a shoulder, willingness, salvation for family, salvation, salvation for family members again, and deliverance. So we just want to say, this is your time. Go in your journal. Go wherever you have your personal prayer requests. Pull them out. And just for the next minute, we're going to throw up a slide. Pull them out and pray into your personal prayer requests. You have not because you ask not, James says. So this is a time where we're asking for big things, your personal prayer requests. Let's do it.
Okay, now we're going to pray for the church and specifically evangel. And as you can see that there's there's a lot of uh, things written on here, but I'm just going to pray. Just agree right from where you're at in your house. And I hope you're standing because we're almost done here. I just want to pray Psalm 103 that that God's faithfulness, God, your faithfulness would ke- your would keep every gracious promise that you you've made. Um, that passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. And God, we just pray that over our house this morning, God, that the promises that Tony was talking about earlier, the promises that you've given us from generation to generation, God, the ones that we've received, the ones that our parents and grandparents have received, and the ones that our kids have received, God, yes, we hold on to those promises, God, and it's your faithfulness. It's your faithfulness that causes those things to come to pass. And so, God, we stand firm on your promises for our families, for our lives, God, and for our future. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Yeah, and we just lift up. Last one, stay with us. Prayer for our nation. Our nation needs prayer right now, so we just push in right now, Jesus, for our nation, the nation of Canada, God. We just pray um, the Lord's Prayer that you taught us Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus. We just pray that your kingdom would come in every single area, God. That We just pray for uh, our prime minister, Justin Trudeau. We just pray that your kingdom would just invade uh, his, his, his friends, his mind, his decisions, everything, God. In parliament, your kingdom come, your will be done. We just pray for Canada, God. You, come on, just declare this with me. God is the God of the impossible. Nothing is too big for you, God. No mountain is too big. You just say, move mountain. What what seems uh, huge to us, God, you just say, be moved. So we just declare that, God. Any opposition, any demonic thing, anything that is not of you, we just we just um, get rid of in Jesus' name, and we just say, God, let your kingdom come. Move in. In Jesus' name. We're going to end here with communion on this uh, house of prayer day. Um, So we just want to say, grab a cracker, grab a piece of bread, grab something that symbolizes Jesus' body and a drink here. And Luke 22 says this. You guys ready to remember what Jesus did? Why we do this? It says, taking bread, he blessed it broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body. Do this in my memory. So let's take it together. Remembering what Jesus did. Jesus, we're so thankful for what you did on the cross for dying and being raised back to life. And we just remember the man, the reason that we gather the hope for which we gather the hope of our lives is, is, is what you did on the cross. So we just remember that. Let's take this piece of bread, this cracker. And he, he did the same with the cup. Next verse, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant written in my blood, poured out for you. Do this, remembering me. Let's take the cup together. Yeah, amen. You're so good, Jesus. We remember what you did on the cross and the resurrection. This resurrection life is alive in us and alive in you. Jesus, we thank you that the prayers that we prayed here this morning, the worship that was sung, the declarations that were made, the promises, like Tony was saying, that have been written down in stone, that that have been remembered. We just declare movement in all of those things. We declare answered prayers. We declare hope being poured into your life. And we declare an amazing rest of the Sunday. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. One more thing. Come on Tuesday night at seven. We're going to have an amazing yes. time. We're going to push through all these things again, seven o'clock to nine o'clock in the evening. It's going to be really good. Hope to see you then. Thank you, Jimmy, for leading us in communion. And have a awesome afternoon.